Previously on Man Sewing, you saw me putting together the pieces of this t-shirt quilt, and I promised you if you asked nice, I would do the free motion machine quilting. Well, today's your lucky day. Let's get started. That's right, welcome back to the t-shirt quilting project. I am so thrilled with all the comments and all the enthusiasm out there. Thank you for encouraging me to take it to the next step and do the free motion quilting. Quilting on t-shirt quilts, uh, based on the folks I've talked to, can be a bit concerning. And there's a lot of different things that happen with t-shirt quilts. So I'm just gonna do a little review. These are old t-shirts that I have already worn pretty well. So they've got a bit of stretch to them. They've got a, a bit of life out, worn out of them, but we wanna save our fantastic logos. So what I did is I took a stabilizer, as you can see here on, in the seam allowances and everything, hopefully, there. This white that you see on the back is a stabilizer that was ironed to the back of the t-shirts and it's on all of the t-shirts before I start any of the cutting or any of the piecing. The first video I was putting together the basic patchwork and there's a lot of different ways to do that. I just finished by putting together the columns and using up the scraps, the leftover parts from around the logos to build out a t-shirt quilt that we could discuss. I tried to make it big enough that it would create some challenges for me today because I really wanted to try to answer all of those questions you were asking in those comments, like what happens when? So here we go, we're gonna try to address a lot of those. Let's start with talking about the backing itself. So on the back of this quilt, it's already totally basted. I've used flannel, and this is a beautiful, um, fantastic flannel from Maywood Studios that I just love. Um, people like flannel because it feels like the t-shirt material itself, but sometimes folks get concerned about their backing being flannel because of the stretch or the give factor. So let's make sure you pre-wash your backing down a couple of times because your t-shirts were washed and worn so many times, there's not gonna be any shrinkage left in them. So we wanna make sure whatever backing fabric we use, we wash it down really, really well. Secondly, um, oh sorry, before we move on to batting, let's finish. Uh, the backings are also sometimes polar fleece or cuddle fabrics, a fantastic fabric. It also works beautifully with t-shirts. Um, same thing, is you, now that's a polyester. You won't need to pre-wash it, but you just wanna make sure that you have plenty of it. And um, the, the other thing I wanna point out with backing is I've also left myself a little extra room around the quilt top, because I know that there could be some stretch and there could be some give. So I will be trimming down the entire project before I bind it, okay? So I just wanna point out that there's some forward thinking in my patchwork itself. I was starting to talk about batting. Batting is one of those things that's optional in t-shirt quilts. It's gonna add a lot of weight and it could add a challenge for the machine quilting. That means one more layer that could be shifting around and working against us. So I put it in for that reason specifically. I'm trying to make this the most difficult quilt to quilt so that we can address those challenges together. Most of us, if you're gonna use minky on the back, you probably won't use any batting inside. It's just gonna be so nice and snugly just that way. There's not really a need for the batting, uh, but it will add additional warmth if you're in one of our colder areas in the world out there. So anyways, a lot of talk about backing, a lot of talk about batting. Um, I've set this up to answer those questions. Now, one of the things we talked about in the previous video also was using our walking foot. Using the walking foot, and I referred to t-shirt quilting in that video because t-shirts, as I said, they wanna move. They've got some give and travel to them. A walking foot's job is to kind of claw from the top and the bottom at the same time, and it's supposed to help move all of those layers through the machine. So if I was gonna do a stitch in the ditch, <laughs> excuse me, a stitch in the ditch technique, meaning sewing through all of these seam allowances themselves, a walking foot like this is a great choice. Even if I want to free motion quilt this, I could do stitch in the ditch and then return to free motion, but I want to address this as all free motion today because we've spent some time with the walking foot before and we have links for those videos out there. So that being said, I'm gonna start in the middle of this project and I can already see that one of these seams has got a little extra character than the rest of the area around it. So I wanna start right in this area today with my free motion techniques and see what happens is we're gonna to try to anchor this area down. We're gonna drift over into here and we're gonna go around this as it was an applique. So I'm using cotton threads uh, in the top and in the bottom, of, or the bobbin I should say. I've got a sew slip mat down on the bed of my machine. Now that sew slip mat's a Teflon coating for the machine and it's gonna make everything travel uh, more smoothly. It resists the drag. So the heavier the weight, the more physical weight this has, the more it's gonna wanna drag. So we really want to not only secure 
the um, movement, but we also want to come in here and I want to get a lot of this extra loft in my favor. What I'm trying to say is I, what's called a stuff and fluff method. So we kind of get in here and I've got a lot of this extra so I can just move really nicely before I get started. And one of the things I learned early on is we get our chores done first at my house and then we play. So right now this is the area I am most worried about. So we're going to address it first. When I machine quilt, if I start to travel around in tight little areas, it's very possible for me to build up a bunch of pucker really quick. So I'm gonna address this with a large broad pass and then I'm gonna come in and kind of section it out. And I'm just gonna start by having a little bit of fun, but I did start give a little bit of a knot here. So now I'm gonna pick up my bobbin thread by taking a single stitch. And if you don't know this trick, it's pretty cool. You hold your thread like dental floss pull it on through and now I have the bobbin thread on the top and I'm going to try to drop that first stitch in a seam so I can take a couple to hold it in place and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to trap this little ripple right away and we're going to come around here and we're just going to come wide. Now you notice my pace is a little bit slower and I came back on it. And the other thing I just felt there, let's talk about that. I felt the extra thickness of the stabilizer and the two seams of the t-shirt. So you should ex expect whenever you're coming over those seam allowances that there might be a little bit more bulk there. And for me, when I have bulk, I want to have extra speed on the machine to penetrate so that it's not slowing it down and I don't want to push. So let's go over that seam again and see what happens. So we're coming here and as I hit this bulk, I want to keep driving through it driving through it and of course I had that worst spot I was dealing with that's what we said we were doing our chores first now what you can really see though is because I have stabilized and I'm addressing this in small passes now that everything is starting to quilt very nicely so I just want to get this thread out of my way there's my little scissors and I'm going to start working now into this blue area and I'm going to build myself a corner section so I can get onto what would be like that applique of the really cool man sewing emblem there. Notice how I had to throw the plug in for the man sewing, of course. So what we're gonna do now is let's do some fun echo quilting along those lines. And I'm just trying to work myself, still respecting that concept of pushing pucker now I'm down in the area where I can go ahead and address the logo itself inside. This is, this is the fun of this here. So now what I wanna do is get my thread right on top there. Now this is not a silk screened logo. This is a iron on logo. So I really don't wanna put the needle in it. It'll just make uh, holes. So I'm gonna sew close to it. And then when I'm done going around the outside edge, I will not go back in and sew in the middle of it because then um, the logo itself will lift off. It'll have more like that crest or that shield effect. And when you're dealing with t-shirt quilts, remember, the reason a lot of us wear our t-shirts is it's a, a logo we love. So when we're gonna be quilting around those logos, we wanna make sure that we give that logo the, the love it still deserves, even though it's a quilt, not a t-shirt anymore. So let's not over quilt on our logos. Let's not hide them too much with our quilting. Okay, now let's address this. I think, see this is a good teachable moment. I'm coming down here, you can see that there's a little bit of ripple starting to develop. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna smooth this with my hand down towards the seam allowance and I'm going to continue on with my um, outlining here so what I did is I moved that ripple out of my way and then later on when I'm sewing in the blue background, I can use blue thread and sew in that area and try to knock it down like I just did with the black area or I'll just use the same white thread and do a cool little circular design in there. The circular designs are great because they push the batting around and hide little ripples where the straight lines a lot of times they kind of form that ripple, at least in my world of my quilting. We all are a little bit different when we do this, and so it's fun to learn a lot of different techniques. I appreciate you all enjoying our videos here at Man Sewing. Okay, 
So I'm coming back up into this area. And a lot of times when we've gone around the perimeter of something, as we're coming back into that final zone, now we might be starting to create a ripple or create a pucker. So what I want to do now is I want to make sure that this is as flat as possible. I'm kind of spreading my fingers away here and, and just looking at it. And then as I come in, I'm able to drop that down really nice and I did not create any pucker or any ripple there. That looked really good. So then I kind of started this fun little arrow motif. So now I'm gonna float back out into the background and do something fun. And with my straight lines, I'm kind of trying to keep my channels a little further apart, as I was saying earlier, so I don't create the puckers. And now what I've effectively done is I've started in the middle of this quilt. I've created some fun little motif. I was able to travel over and get around an applique. So all of that area between where I've started and this applique now, I can come in here and just play. And when I say play, I mean I'm gonna, what I like to do, because this is my quilt, my style of quilting is I set some lines and then I just free motion using some of those favorite motifs that we've created. And so that's why I hope you're spending some time in our skills and drills section at Man Sewing, because a lot of these motifs are, when I talk about being background, I use them over and over again to create the flattening or the background quilting to, to make the rest of the design show up. So that's what a lot of those are designed for. And I hope you're learning with me as I go. We've created a few new ones recently that I hope you'll like. And with that said, I kind of keep forgetting you're paying attention because I'm so getting into my zen of my machine quilting here. So I'm hoping that this has gotten all of those questions answered about backing and batting choices. I didn't talk about the safety pin basting. I probably should have. I laid it out as a standard basting. I just tried to avoid putting the pins anywhere that I'd want to be sewing because I don't want to put a bunch of holes or a bunch of pins in my way. Um, I've addressed talking about that walking foot. Use that when you need for your stitch in the ditch if you like, but I'm really going to encourage you to play with your free motion machine quilting. Remember, these t-shirts are special, special to the person you're going to give this quilt to, so put some time and effort into the machine quilting and do not be intimidated. People maybe have told you it's difficult, but there's a lot of great ways. If that stabilizer's in place, you shouldn't have any problems. Just take your time, enjoy it, review this video a few times, and we'll see you next time right here at Man Sewing. Thanks for being a Man Sewing fan. It's great to have you out there encouraging me to create fantastic new content. If you've missed any of the videos, we've got links for you here and here. And while you're checking those out, make sure you're subscribed. We don't want you to miss any of the action.